Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar called CK12, A Solution for Flexible Learning. I'm Katie, and my colleague Lindsay and I will be guiding today's conversation about how CK12 can be a solution for any educational situation, whether that's in-person learning, fully remote learning, homeschooling, or any hybrid or blended model of teaching and learning. We're so glad to have you with us today for this interactive session, and we want you to leave with practical strategies for implementing CK-12 in any educational context, either as your core curriculum or as a resource to supplement your current instruction. Now, CK-12 is a robust platform. Our goal in this session is to give you an introduction to the CK-12 Foundation and to CK-12.org, and to show you the power of our Flexbook 2.0 platform plus all of the interactivity and related content that brings learning to life. I'll show you a variety of ways to access, share, and assign content to students, as well as how you can monitor their progress. We'll discuss strategies for implementation, whether you're doing in-person or fully remote instruction. And lastly, we'll make sure you leave knowing where to find any additional help and support should you need it when exploring CK-12. Before we get started today, Let's make sure everyone is comfortable with the two Zoom windows that we use. You should see multiple options. One is for Q&A and one is for chat. So during today's presentation, whenever you have a question you'd like the CK12 team to answer, please post it in the Q&A window. That's the window we'll be monitoring throughout the presentation. The chat window is a place for a community conversation, which looks like it's already up and running, so that's great. Um, and we'd love for you all to introduce yourselves. Now, if you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and the subject you teach. Just make sure in the chat window that you're sending any general posts to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see your post and not just us here at CK12. Yeah, I'm looking at the chat window right now and it looks like we've got greetings from California, from Florida, from Albania, but a lot of these messages were just sent to panelists. So go ahead and reintroduce yourself and send it to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see it. Um, also, this is scheduled to be about a 40 minute webinar and we're gonna break a few times to answer questions live. And then we'll also stay on at the end of the webinar to address any unanswered questions. Um, also, we are recording this webinar and it will be available at ck12.org webinars in the archived section in the next 24 hours if you wanna revisit anything you learned today or share the presentation with a friend or colleague. Now, for many of you, this webinar may be your first introduction to CK12, but we've been the premier flexible learning solution since 2007, serving over 100 million users from around the world. We firmly believe that every student has a unique personalized learning journey, and we offer multiple pathways for students to learn in their own way. We're a nonprofit organization, and all of our resources, absolutely everything on CK12 is free. You won't see any advertising on our site. You'll never hit a paywall. CK12 is proud to provide free access for all teachers and learners, giving you the tools and resources you need to seamlessly transition between in-person and remote schooling. And that's really the benefit to using CK-12. We're gonna be your partner for whatever plans your school or district throws at you this year. Um, I loved this quote that was sent to us back in March by one of our certified educators in Kansas. And um, she said, because I've been using CK-12 these last few years, my students are having no problems transitioning to online learning. The easy integration with Google, Google Classroom makes it possible for me to assign anything easily. The videos and clicks options that show up along the sides of my posted reading have my students investigating further than I even ask of them. I'm so thankful for this resource. Um, and that's just the sentiment. We heard a lot of that um, in March and April when schools all of a sudden, you know, were fully remote and our teachers who'd been using CK-12 their students were already on board with the digital instruction and it was really a seamless process for them. So um, in this year where everyone has to be flexible and reimagining reimagining what learning looks like, um, just know that we are here to help you. So what specifically are we offering you? Um, quite simply, we're offering you the highest quality content that's accessible across every platform and device from Chromebooks to smartphones to tablets to desktop computers. Customized Flexbooks can be downloaded as PDFs as well for those needing static copies or offline access, though the best experience will always be online with our latest offerings and adaptive learning. 
Now, when you arrive at ck12.org, you may notice that the bulk of our resources fall within the branches of math and science. We offer comprehensive coverage for middle and high school math and science with our newest interactive flexbooks, ad attached adaptive practice, and related content such as videos, interactives, and real world applications. We do have some math adaptive practice and videos at the elementary level and offer elementary science readers. We also have some college flexbooks and some content that goes beyond the STEM subject areas as well. I encourage you to check out our flexlets that were developed this summer to help fill in student learning gaps and get them prepared for the upcoming year by studying the key concepts in a variety of math and science subjects. Now, all of these resources on CK12 can be used as is, or you can customize content to meet the needs of your standards and your community. We actually have an entire section of our site that is dedicated to sharing the content our users customize and create. So like Katie just said, while CK12 only offers a few flex books in the area of language arts, for instance, we do have schools and districts who've created books on our site that are ready to be used by you. So don't be afraid to use the search bar for any subject or topic and click over to the community contributed tab to see what we offer. And then the schools page that the screen's showing you right now is another great place to see content created in a region near you. Now, this is really the magic to CK12. You can use the power of the CK12 platform to customize, create, and curate your own content. When schools started to shut down in March due to coronavirus, the Merced County Office of Education in California needed a way to organize and deliver content to the 22 districts that it serves, and they needed to do it quickly. And what's super impressive is that within a matter of weeks, they built their own flex books on CK12 using their teacher created materials, as well as other open educational resources. They embedded videos from their own YouTube channel and even attached a customized quiz to each of their lessons. Then 22 districts had access to quality content that they could use for online or in-person instruction with their students. Now, I just like Merced County is a great example of what's possible if you get the right people around the table who are willing to reimagine what good virtual education looks like. Now, as you're finding resources you like on CK12, you can add them to your library or copy and paste the unique URL and share the resource with others. If you want to assign the work to students and receive feedback on how they did, you can also create a CK12 class or use one of our integrated learning management systems. That's right, CK12 works seamlessly with the classes you have already created in Google Classroom, Canvas, and Schoology making it easy for you to assign work and view insights and reports without needing to create duplicate classes on CK12. We'll put some quick reference links for these learning management systems in chat, and we encourage you to join us for our webinar offerings or check out our recordings that go in depth on these integrations. Finally, as a note, you can use Clever and ClassLink to log in, and you'll find some CK12 content in Enmodo and Kidum. All right, so now that you understand a little bit more about who CK12 is and what we offer, um, I'm going to take the screen from Katie and I'm going to go live to the site and I'm going to show you a few things about navigation and then we're going to go straight into a Flexbook 2.0 so you can see what that looks like. Um, first thing you'll notice is that I am signed in up here um, into a demo account that I've, I've identified myself as a teacher. So everything is free. There's no catch. <laughs> um, you will just want to set up an account at some point so that we can start um, tracking your resources in your library for you and making smart recommendations. Um, we do have a slightly different version of the site, whether you are a teacher or a student. I can flip over and see the student version of the homepage where really we're trying to make that search bar front and center. Um, and they have a little bit of a different view when they're looking for the subjects. Um, but today I'm going to be demoing under a teacher account. So I'm going to go back to the teacher version of the site. And the menu option that I really like to point out to everybody is this explore menu option at the top. This is an easy way to access a lot of the things I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you a Flexbook 2.0, but within, embedded within the lessons of a Flexbook, our adaptive practice, simulations, and clicks, and all of these things can be standalone modalities that can be assigned to your students. 
Um, we referenced the schools page earlier. Here's a quick link to that. We have a discussion forum called the cafe that you may want to visit. For those of you who are looking for additional information about standards, we talk about our CCSS alignment and NGSS alignment on these two pages. And then we have a certified educator program we'll talk about at the end, and we keep referencing that we've got archived webinars um, as well as upcoming webinars available at this page right here. So I encourage you to use the explore menu to jump into um, the different things that you're looking for. You can also, of course, um, use the subjects menu here of the what are you looking for today and Katie showed you what this looked like earlier so you could jump right into any content here. And then in the search bar, um, don't forget that uh, you can search. I'm going to search for water cycle. Um, when you type in something like water cycle, this is very popular apparently. It appears about 6,000 times in CK12 content. Um, just know the, the way I like to filter is I like to use the categories down here. If I know that I'm looking for a lesson, I can filter for just the reads that talk about the water cycle. Um, I could look for just our new Flexbook 2.0s that include the water cycle. Um, or if I wanted to see videos or clicks. And water cycle might be too broad of a concept to really narrow it down. Uh, but use the categories here. I think it's a really meaningful way to, to get through this list. And then don't forget that we have this community contributed area. So um, like I said, for some subjects, you'll see that CK12 doesn't have very much to offer you of our content. But when you flip over to the community contributed tab, you'll see content that's been created by other users that you're welcome to, um, to, to look at and to, to use if you think it'd be impactful for your students. Okay, let me press the CK12 logo and go back out to the homepage. And I'm just going to scroll down here and I'm going to jump into a physical science for middle school book. So when I select physical science here from the from the middle, I can see that I'm now in the CK 12 physical science for middle school book by CK 12. There's some information about standards here if I need some of that information. I have some options to um, add this book to my library. It's already in my library. Um, all of our content is customizable. So if you're wanting to do any customizations, this is your option to customize. Um, when I look at the overview of this book, these are all chapters. And then when you open up any individual chapter, you see all of the lessons um, within that chapter. Um, I'm going to go into lever. So this is just 1310, section 1310 of our physical science for middle school book. Um, before I'm even taken to the actual lesson and the content on the page, our students are presented with other ways to learn. Um, and this is, this is huge. Our team hand curated what we thought were the best modalities available on CK12 to teach the concept um, for this one is lever. And so here's a simulation, here's a clicks, Here's a couple of videos and here's a real world application. So this is great for students um, who are going to quickly raise their hand or tell you on Zoom that, you know, hey, I'm done with my assignment. What can I do next? Other ways to learn. Um, or your students who are struggling and say, hey, I need more review. You know, I'm not understanding this. Here's some other ways to learn. So you can use these strategically um, to teach a concept. It's not just the lesson. Um, but when you press start, you'll be taken to the lesson itself. And this is what a page in a Flexbook 2.0 looks like. Pretty typical, there's an image up at the top. If I scroll down, you'll see that we've got some, some questions. There are some words that are in green that would link me to concept pages that would give me more information about those concepts. Um, there's videos that are embedded. You can embed anything from a YouTube site or a Vimeo site. You can upload your own videos to YouTube and then embed them as well. Here's a chart with some, um, you know, images and graphics in here. This is a simulation, which I'll launch in a minute, but it, notice it's just embedded right here in the lesson. And if I scroll down, I'm going to see a Plix interactive, then some summary questions and some review questions. Okay, so this isn't just your typical digital book, right? This isn't just a PDF of content. Like we're capitalizing on digital by giving the students the interactive experience. Um, something else while I'm down here that you, you can't do with a lot of other textbooks is that you can instantly change the language into dozens of other languages. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change it over into Spanish. 
and you'll see that it changed the CK12 menus and it changed the lesson. Um, our adaptive practice is a, is a different uh, kind of platform. So it's not going to change the answers and the questions for adaptive practice. But as far as getting your students the content or equally as important, your parents, um, you know, if you've got parents who are trying to assist their students and they speak a different language at home, um, they have easy access to translating their content, which is really powerful. So that's this Google Translate button down at the bottom. Let me flip it back into English. Um, I just referenced practice. So in our Flexbook 2.0, each lesson is going to come with a practice and you can swap practice out for a quiz that you create if you want. Um, but our adaptive practice is going to adjust to how the student is performing. It's going to go from easy, medium, and hard um, and offer recommendations in the moment for the students. Uh, let me just open this up to give you a taste of what it looks like to be an adaptive practice. Um, it is set up where students are always trying to get 10 correct. That's just how this game is played here. They're trying to get 10 correct. So some students may knock it out of the park and get 10 out of 10. Um, some students may, it may take 15 questions. It may take 20 questions for them to answer 10 correctly, but they're gonna be progressively and appropriately challenged based on those easy, medium and hard questions. Um, you'll see that we offer hints. Uh, this is a practice tool. We want students to get hints. We want them to think about it. We want them to have multiple tries to um, get an answer correct if they miss something. Um, you can see here, I, I missed that. Um, and so I'm getting some tips over here. I'm getting some motivation up at the top and I have the answer, I have the option to try again. Um, you're gonna see all sorts of questions in our adaptive practice. You're gonna see short answer. You're gonna see drag drop, true false, multiple choice. Um, like I said, most all the questions come with hints. And then there's even a scratch pad if your students need to sketch anything out to help them answer these questions. Um, I, I'm not doing very well so far. I've only answered two correct. I, I started this probably in another demo a month ago or something. So um, I'd, I'd already banked a couple of questions correctly. Uh, but here under the skill level, you can see that we, um, we code it as far as how the students are doing with the level of difficulty of their questions and the frequency at which they're answering them correctly. So we start at beginning and then move up to mastery. And here's a little information about what that looks like. But students can start and stop at any time. They can do some before dinner. They can do some, you know, after the test, if you're like, hey, you really struggled with that test. Why don't you go back and do some more practice? They can always do more practice even after they get their 10 correct. And then if you as a teacher had assigned this, you would be able to see a same report that the students get to see. And just, this is a sample report um, that shows you that I'm 20% of the way to that goal of getting 10 correct. I've spent eight total minutes on this. This was last practice today. And then you can see that I'm one for seven on easy questions and one for three on medium questions. And then you could scroll down and you can see exactly what I've been answering, which has mostly been gibberish and um, demos. And this is, this is huge for teachers to be able to, if you want granular information about how the students are progressing, you get reports like this. It says what I answered on my first try, what I answered on my second try. Um, again, time spent, that skill level, and then the breakdown of easy, medium, and hard questions. So that's a little sample of what the adaptive practice looks like. That's attached to, again, all of the lessons that are part of our CK12 Flexbook 2.0 books. Um, I mentioned the words simulation and clicks earlier. Let me launch a simulation to show you what this looks like. Um, we have over 120 physics and chemistry simulations, although use those terms lightly because I've seen this used in a sixth grade class. Um, <laughs> I've seen them used in math classes for those cross-cutting, um, intersecting subjects. Uh, but basically all of our simulations, they open up with some sort of introductory video here, which is giving you the idea of these two people on the seesaw. Uh, I'm going to move it along just for time's sake here. And then with our simulations, you're then taken to a sandbox area where students are going to manipulate different variables. Um, here I'm moving the distance, distance from the fulcrum. I can manipulate the mother's weight. And then it's what's it going to take for Sarah? Does Sarah need to be heavier? Does she need to be farther away from the fulcrum. All right, there we go. That's when I start to see it um, flipping. So our simulations are set up like this with the sandbox area. There are questions that relate to each simulation. There's even a worksheet that you could download, give to your students. 
um, to help them kind of walk through this. And then what I love is that every simulation ends with an extension activity. So you just, you just saw the seesaw, but why do you bend your leg to kick a ball? How does a nutcracker work? Um, we, we offer all these other ways to continue exploring that concept. So you're gonna find some of these simulations embedded right within our lessons or under that explore mini that I showed you earlier, you could browse just the simulations if you wanted to see um, just, just that environment. Um, and then this here, this is a Plix. And let me show you what a Plix is. Um, also interactive, it's not quite as uh, advanced of an environment with the animation and, and whatnot. It's a little simpler the way that these work. There's usually um, a red dot that the students are gonna use to create some sort of action over here. Um, here we can have some different labels, but then they're answering a series of questions, somewhere between about five and eight questions. Uh, these have hints as well, because again, this is all just like experiential learning practice for the students. Um, they're going to answer a question. They can get the correct answer shown to them if they would like. And then we always offer, you know, some help if they're in the moment trying to figure out um, how to answer these questions correctly. We serve them up content to do that as well. Um, so this is what a Plix looks like. Different types of questions, multiple choice, drag drop. Um, these are assignable uh, as standalone activities, or again, you're gonna see them embedded within our Flexbook 2.0 lessons. Uh, let me go back up to the top. A couple other things that I wanna mention is that you are able to uh, highlight and take notes. So students will be able to mark up their text. They can change the color of what they want it to look like. So I'm gonna make this purple. It's hard to do with my giant mouse. There we go, there's purple. Um, I've seen teachers strategically color code things of, you know, find the hypothesis and highlight it in purple, find three supporting details, highlight it in yellow. Um, students can take notes as well. So I'm just going to add a note. Um, all of this highlighting and note taking is being saved in the student's account. Um, so you as a teacher don't see it by default, but under the toolbar here, if you see this toolbar in the upper right hand corner, this is where you get some really exciting menu options. And one of them is notes and highlights. So students would be able to select notes and highlights and have a record of anything that they added notes to or their highlights, or I could delete it if I wanted. Um, but it's a running record of everything that they need to know. Um, some other things in the toolbar, uh, we'll mention insights a little bit later uh, for you folks who are going to be assigning 2.0 lessons, you're able to get some intelligent reporting on how your students did. This related content area, um, this has those modalities that were presented on that start page of these other ways to learn. These are all assignable individually or again, some of them appeared within this lesson. You can attach a a PDF, a JPEG, a PowerPoint, um, whatever file type that you need to to this resource, you're, you're able to do that for your students. You've got all these action items of assigning and sharing and adding to your library and customizing. Um, the only other one that I wanted to talk about right now actually is down here of um, people who are asking about accessibility. Uh, you can come to your display settings and you can change it to you can change the color the background, you can make the font size bigger or smaller depending on you know, what you're projecting it on and you can change line spacing options. So you do have some customization there for how you do the display. Um, if I'm a teacher wanting to assign this lesson, pressing the assign button presents you two immediate options. If you are a Google Classroom user, you will want to use Google Classroom because you already have your roster set up. You're already using Google, Google Classroom for everything. You've got the same functionality with Google Classroom as you would with CK12 classes. So we ask that you always use Google Classroom. If you are a Canvas or a Schoology user, and so I just clicked and I don't see my LMS, we're gonna give you some information about installing Canvas or Schoology and how to get um, us up and running within those. Um, if you don't have Canvas Schoology or Google Classroom, or if you're, you know, a parent, you're a, you're a homeschooling teacher, you want to set up classes for your children, um, or again, students, students in your classroom, you can set up a CK12 class. We are an option for you to track student progress. 
Um, table of contents over here on the left in the book would navigate me different areas. And then I can use the breadcrumbs here to go back out to the main book. Um, so Katie, I'm going to stop there for a second. I don't know what kind of questions are coming in, but let's, let's, let's check in. I know that was a lot of information. So let's see, let's see what we can address to clear some things up for everyone. Yeah, we have a great question about practice and our flex books. Um, so this person said, instead of assigning the full Flexbook lesson with the attached practice, can I post a link directly to the practice if I just want them to do that? So maybe you could show how you'd get to like our browse options for all of practice. And if you wanted to go in there. Sure. So we've been in this Flexbook 2.0 world. And so when I assign a Flexbook 2.0 lesson, it's going to give me the report on how I did for this practice. But I think you're asking of, okay, you don't need the text. You're just interested in the adaptive practice. Um, I'm going to go back out to the home page and remind you, we've got this explore menu option here. Notice we have an adaptive practice browser, and this is going to show me all of the subjects and all of the different areas where we have adaptive practice. So if I'm into geometry, I can search by these different uh, branches within geometry and triangle area. That's what I'm teaching. So I could select triangle area and I have the option to assign this to my class. Now, I think the question had something to do with sharing and assigning. Um, assigning means that you want to see the progress of how the student did. So you would need to assign it if you would want to get a report back. Um, most of our resources on CK12 have a URL that you could always just grab the URL and share it if you didn't need to see a report for how students did. Great, thanks. And just one thing to note, if you're assigning this practice, it would pull practice for anything that had to do with triangle areas across our system. Whereas the practice that's attached that 2.0 lesson is really tailor made to go with that lesson. Um, so we do encourage you when at all possible to use the Flexbook lesson and the attached practice. Um, but this is another option as well. So beyond that, our questions all seem to have to do with accessibility, um, whether that had to do with languages or, you know, accessing this on our iPad. Our site is available across tablets, iPads, um, Chromebooks, laptops, all the rest. Some of our interactives get a little tricky on a phone, but students can do practice and read Flexbooks on a phone. So all sorts of options there. You can see the download worksheet option right there if you want to download a printed practice um, right next to the customized option. And that will allow you to print a subset of that practice um, and access that if you need offline access or any custom Flexbook can be downloaded. Um, and Lindsay talked about Google Translate language options and we'll talk about it some more. So um, all sorts of options for accessibility. We really do believe in making sure that students have access regardless of where they're coming from or what their current access level is for internet or other pieces. Um, so I think with that, we have answered our questions. Star has been doing a great job. Um, and I'm going to borrow the screen back and we're going to go through some strategies and talk about those. But all of you guys on this webinar are more than welcome to keep posting questions in Q&A. And after we talk about some strategies, we'll jump back in and answer some more. So as I was starting to say, the, one of the biggest things is that we do recommend you use a Flexbook 2.0 as your primary mode of instruction. Um, this allows your students to shift from in-class learning to remote learning and back again without any issue. These also have integrated the best of CK12 into these 2.0 lessons. You can get meaningful insights on how students engage with the lesson and performed on the adaptive practice. And so with that, consider starting this year with an interactive digital book, whether that's one that you found from CK12 or from the larger community. And you can use it as is, or take the time to customize the scope and sequence of your book and localize the content specifically for your students. Flexbooks can be updated at any time throughout the year if you want to make additional modifications and changes. One of the best ways to check student progress is by assigning adaptive practice and that can be either through the 2.0 lesson or individually from that practice browser that I just showed you. But let our adaptive practice system do the heavy lifting for you, offering students recommendations in the moment. If you want to create your own questions and assignments, I think this actually just popped up in the chat window, um, you are able to set up what we call a quiz on CK12, where you get to pick from our bank of questions or add your own questions to it. 
and you have a quiz that you can assign to your students as well. And that's kind of a meatier topic, so you might need to, to check out our help desk resource on creating a quiz, but know that you can, can take that subset and assign it to your students. Great. And another thing we recommend is using our annotation tools. So these help students stay engaged as they interact with the learning content, and then any highlights or notes that a student takes will stay and appear in their individual accounts under the toolbar, which Lindsay has been showing you all about today. They can then go revisit those notes and annotations to help with self-study, to review for something, or just to go back and check, make sure they got an understanding of what that was before they start practice. Okay, then I briefly mentioned insights earlier. Um, if you've assigned a Flexbook 2.0 lesson, either through a CK12 class, Google Classroom, Schoology, or Canvas, you have access to insights. And this is a powerful feature in our toolbar that lets you see the time a student spent on a lesson, a histogram of where they spent that time, the skill level they received on the attached adaptive practice, and an engagement score that gives you an indicator of how much students interacted with the lesson, such as through watching videos, using interactives, and engaging with highlighting and annotations. And I'll tell you that our team is actively building out more of these. I think we're releasing more insights um, within the next couple of weeks where you're gonna start to see whole class recommendations um, like the ones there on the screen. We're just trying to give you as much insight into how your students are performing as possible. Now CK12 also offers class level and individual reports, making it easy for both the teacher and the student to monitor progress. So you get the whole class level view and then the detailed piece and students can see all of that detailed part in their own account. Teachers can then use this heat map on the class reports to see at a glance which of their students are completing work or performing well on quizzes and which are struggling. When you click on an individual student, Teachers can see the same report the student received, so that same one I was just talking about on the right, um, when they're completing practice or a quiz. And this includes the time spent, the number of easy, medium, and hard questions they answer correctly, their skill level, and even a record of the exact answer the student selected or typed in. All right, our interactives, both the simulations and the plics, are great for online and in-person instruction to preview, reinforce, or review concepts. Many teachers choose to begin their classes with a PLIX as a bell ringer activity. Um, students can work individually or in partners to answer the challenge questions. And then our simulations, since they open with those broad questions relating to a real world situation, um, these are great if you're in person with your students where you can consider starting the class with the simulation projected on the board um, and discuss student ideas before you even proceed with the activity. Students who are engaging with the simulation at home have access to a video tutorial, slider-based questions, and extension activities to reinforce their learning that way. Now our concept pages, which you can find through search, or the start pages when you open any Flexbook 2.0 lesson from the table of contents, have curated modalities to allow students to learn their own way. These are the same ones you see under that related content in a 2.0 lesson. Now, if you give students the choice of how they want to learn a concept, this can help them kind of be a leader in their own learning and help them understand. So these curated modalities include videos, real world applications, interactives, study guides, and more. Feel free to grab the URL to a concept page or start page and share it with your students, or even go in and assign the individual modalities if you want to report on student progress for any of them. So remote learning doesn't mean isolated learning. Students can collaborate with other users from around the world in the CK12 Cafe, a discussion forum for answering questions and sharing thoughts on math and science concepts. We encourage your students to take part in the conversation. Now remember that all of CK12's resources have unique URLs that you can share with your students and with their families. In your outgoing communication, make sure to link to individual Flexbook sections or the whole Flexbook, and even include instructions for how parents and guardians can use the Google Translate feature to instantly change the content into their home language. While using our Flexbooks online will always provide the best experience for students so they can access the interactives, the videos, the adapt adaptable content, Users can still download a PDF of a book they've customized, and you can also download adaptive practice and quizzes if you need the offline access. 
Okay, so I think we're going to do kind of a last call for questions coming into the Q&A. Katie's got a few additional tidbits to pass on to you before you all jump off this webinar. So um, go ahead and put any additional questions into Q&A and we'll be back on in just a minute to, to do any demos that you might need. Great. Thanks, Lindsay. So today's webinar was a super quick tour of what CK12 has to offer. If you want to learn more about our platform and resources or would like an easy page to share with your colleagues, you can go to ck12.org slash overview. There's also a brochure there, our flyer, available for you to download. The testimonials page, which is found in the footer under the explore menu or at ck12.org slash testimonials, is another place to hear from students and educators about CK12 products and how they are being used in the classroom. We've traveled around the country for the last few years and have a variety of stories, reasons to use CK12, and strategies for implementation that others have shared with us. Feel free to browse or filter based on role or topic. Now, if you need additional assistance as you're exploring CK12, visit ck12.org slash help or click on help in our footer or header for quick articles and tips for using CK12. Also, as we noted earlier in this webinar, if you go to ck12.org slash webinars, you can sign up for future webinars and check out archived recordings. We have one more webinar scheduled for this month, and that's tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time on CK12 and Google Classroom. So if that's something that you're using, that might be a great resource to understand what we offer and how it integrates. And we also have similar ones already done that are in the archive section for Canvas and Schoology. So those are also short webinars, and you're more than welcome to check out those recordings, as well as some other great webinars we've done, like our panel with students on their experiences during COVID and online schooling. Now, if you've never checked out CK12's YouTube channel, you'll find a wide range of videos from content tutorials to testimonials to previous webinars. I want to call special attention to the quick overviews playlist that's recently been updated. These are bite-sized videos, only a couple minutes in length, that quickly get you the help you need on a variety of CK12 tasks. We're also thrilled to announce that we launched our brand new self-paced certified educator program this month. And if you are intrigued by what you saw today and want to dive deeper into all of CK12's tools and resources, consider joining a community of educators becoming certified at no cost and on their own schedule. Go to ck12.org slash certified and click join to register for the program and be placed in a class. You'll be seeing email blasts from us as we continue to promote this over the course of this fall, but feel free to get started today. And don't forget to let your social networks know about CK12. You can like our Facebook page and share content with your friends from at CK12 Foundation. And we're also on Twitter at at CK12 Foundation. Now social media is really a great way to find and share resources and strategies for addressing learning, both in person and online. And we encourage you to share your finds with us and CK12 with others. So with that, we thank you all for joining us. If you are all set, Feel free to sign off. If you have any questions you want us to answer today, um, go ahead and continue to post them in Q&A, or if you find one down the road, email us at support at ck12.org. Okay. Um, I think I'm sharing my screen. Um, Katie, you mentioned these quick overview videos earlier. Um, somebody just said, can they see how to make an assignment in Google Classroom? And honestly, like these videos are, are fabulous. Here's 55 seconds on assigning CK12 modalities to Google Classroom. Um, so I, I posted this link for that person, but just know that we, we try to make it easy with these just bite-sized skills that we don't, you know, aren't able to demo for the masses today. But if you're needing more information, especially on our learning management systems, there's some great tips here. Um, we have a question about creating accounts. Um, so when you are creating an account, you have an option. Um, I'll go ahead and sign out. Um, so you have the option to join. Um, 
different things here. So if you're a student, um, you're going to be able to join. Um, if you're in a district that's using Google, again, they could sign up with their Google account, sign up using email account. Um, if you're a learning management person, if you're making assignments through Google, Canvas, or Schoology, the nice thing is, is that your students don't need to create separate accounts of when they click on that assignment link through those applications, they're going to automatically be synced with CK12. Um, but for any of you who are working with CK12 classes and you need reports a different way, students would sign up here um, and then they would be able to um, join some CK12 classes and you'd be able to see their progress. Great, Lindsay, I think we've managed to answer the questions that have come in. So feel free to reach out to us at support if you have any future ones. And if you're joining us tomorrow, we look forward to seeing you on that webinar.